Hello. Welcome to Chapter 4 with Time Rider and another Matchbox Restoration. It seems like every one of these I do, even though it might seem simple on the surface, brings its own special challenges. And the restoration I'm doing today is no different. There's always something new to learn, and sometimes you learn it the hard way. Today's restoration is going to be the Matchbox 12C Safari Land Rover. It was produced from 1965 to 1970 with both regular wheels and the super fast wheels. Although when they did the super fast they did change the color to gold and there's also a fairly rare green variant. This one though is teal. Some people call it blue. I think it's teal. As I've become more involved in restorations, I decided that I need to get myself organized. So I made myself an Excel spreadsheet to track all of the models that I have. I have duplicates of some, they're in various conditions. Sometimes I buy extra things. I decided it would be smart if I kept track of all that so I know how much I'm spending and remember what I have on hand. I purchased mine for $3.40 in a lot I purchased on eBay with several other models. It was in fair condition, it had a lot of chips in it, it was missing the luggage rack that belongs on the top, but all in all it was straight, the glass was dirty but appeared to be free of scratches and cracks, the axles were a bit corroded and the tires of course were weather worn for lack of a better term. The trailer hitch was still intact, which is always a good thing. But anyway, this was my starting point. This particular model comes with a black plastic base. It's held in with tabs and one post. So it's time to drill out the post and as always, it's important to be careful so that you don't do more damage to the model when you're taking it apart. Once you've drilled out the post, you stick in a screwdriver and pop out the base. Once you've done that, it's a simple matter to remove the interior, at which point you may or may not have to drill out another short post to get the glass out. In this particular case, the interior held the glass in place. and I just popped it out. We all know how stripper works so I won't bore you with that part. And then I took my picks and my safety pins and my toothpicks and got out all of the paint out of the little crevices and gave the model a good once over to make sure that there weren't any pits or anything that had to be filled. And then I was ready for primer. I use the Tamiya Light Primer and I really do like it. It goes on really well, it coats really well, and it leaves the details pretty well revealed. I need to apologize for the lighting here. I need to upgrade my little studio, but uh, I think you get the idea. While the primer was curing, I took a chance to work on the wheels a little bit and I have to give credit to my mentor Matchbox Marty. I use a wash that consists of black paint that's been thinned out quite a bit and you can paint it onto the tires and it dries really well and gives the tires a nice new looking sheen. I use it on almost every model that I do. Another tip of the trade that I learned from watching Marty's videos is to save a little bit of paint from the original model. Then over time you can mix and adjust the hue of your paint to try to match the original. And I don't know if you've ever tried to make teal, but I can tell you this, you haven't lived until you've tried. It's essentially a mix of blue, green, a little yellow, and sometimes a whole lot of white. 
dependent on what color green and what color blue you're using to start with. So now it's time to break out the airbrush and try to make this look like the original. And if you've never airbrushed before, I suggest you get on YouTube and check out some videos because there's a right and a wrong way to do it, especially if you have an airbrush like mine that has no storage tank. So sometimes it doesn't keep up with my spraying technique and I have to do it in spurts. If I try to do sustained bursts, I run out of air and the, the paint doesn't come out properly. So it takes practice, you get better at it. You saw a big glob come out right there and that's what happens sometimes. And this, my friends, is where I ran into trouble. You see, I used to sell automotive paint about a hundred years ago and I was always told that you could put acrylic over acrylic and enamel over enamel. That's not necessarily so. It's kind of tough to see, but when I went to clear coat the cured base coat, and I did let it dry for a full day, the clear coat attacked the base coat and created these light areas where it dissolved the paint nearly down to the primer. I sent an email to a couple other modelers I know and was told, well, you need to use a different brand of clear coat. So if you're using Tamiya paint, you're probably better off using Tamiya clear coat. And if you're using tester paint, you're probably better off using tester clear coat. They're a little more expensive, but they'll save you the trouble of having to rework a model like I did in this case. And actually, I had to rework two because I was doing two restorations at the same time. And it happened to both of them. So first I swore for a while, then I pouted for a day, then I remixed my paint, sprayed it again, and let it cure for another day and used testers clear over the Tamiya paint and it was much more forgiving than the Krylon that I was using. So now it's time for reassembly and rather than use epoxy I was going to try this flexible adhesive that I had laying around. I figured it might be a little bit more forgiving if I used that to secure the windscreen and other things that needed to be glued together. So if I ever had to take the model back apart again it would be easier to do and less likely to break things like the windscreen. So I took a little gob and I was going to put it inside and then I thought, well, I don't know, maybe that isn't such a good idea. Maybe I'll have a little more control if I put it on the windscreen itself, which is where my decision-making tree led me. And uh, so I just put a little dab of it onto the windscreen and then just uh, pressed the windscreen into place with my fingers. Sorry Marty, no cotton bud here. Uh, I used just a smidge too much and you'll see me here I take a little pick and kind of clear away a little bit that oozed out through that little side window uh, on the roof. But all in all I, th I think it worked pretty well and I'm probably going to continue to use it in the future. Uh, I'm not playing with these cars so you know, they're usually just sitting on display, and I don't think that I need to use something as permanent as epoxy. And it seems like when I do assemblies, I sometimes have problems with the paint being damaged, and I think it's the oil on my skin, or maybe I'm grasping it too hard. So this time I decided that I'd do something a little different, and I, I wrapped the model in a rag when I was putting it together so that I didn't do any damage to the paint. Uh, when I did the uh, Damler bus, I wound up taking a little chip of paint out of it and it really ticked me off after all the work I had put into it. So anyway, uh, here I am just putting the base back on it and we'll move forward here with my final reveal. So here's a little reminder of where I started. A little bit chipped. No big cracks or scratches in the glass. I had to glue the luggage rack on the top. I purchased that on the internet. It looked like it was supposed to have a post that went into the uh, hole on the top of the model, but when I got it, it didn't have a post. So I used some of my rubberized adhesive to put it into place. I had to go on the internet and look to remind myself which way the luggage rack was supposed to go. I have a lot to learn as a videographer, but I am a wicked good photographer. So I wanted to include a still shot so you could see how well exactly I did match the color. And 
I thought I did pretty good. So there you have it. Matchbox 12C Safari Land Rover. So as promised, here's the products I use. Tamiya X8 Yellow, X14 Light Blue, XF70 Dark Green, and a whole lot of X2 White. Novus 1 and 2 helps clean fine scratches off the glass and the tester spray lacquer in the little can that costs about 10 bucks. This is Chapter 4 with Time Writer. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and please share. See you next time.